And oh, there goes the cuckoo. Bang on time, the cuckoo speaks. Eleven cooks. Uh, listen. Can you hear that? Yes, not only does the cuckoo come out of its little trap door with its beak and cuckoo, there is a little tune that plays as well. You missed that. Did you miss that? Never mind. It, it'll come round again at 12 o'clock if we're still here at that time. A very good evening to you. Uh, depending on what time you're watching this, it's either Wednesday night or Thursday morning, the 19th of March 2015. Here we are at last. A late night show. New computer. New software, all checked out except for one, two things. I'm recording on the same computer, the audio, and I've also upped the picture quality to maximum. Now, I, I wasn't able to test this with anyone uh, before I started today. There were three people I tested with yesterday uh, going out at standard rate, but I have upped everything to maximum because I think this computer can handle it. So, hopefully... That's all working very well. And welcome along, boys and girls. OK, now, uh, a little bit later on, in about 10 minutes time, we'll be talking to someone called Alfie, who is into Reiki. Have you any idea what Reiki is or Reiki? Reiki, Reiki. I think it's a little bit like the old scones, scone thing or bagel, bagel. You know, people were never quite sure how to say that. Who's right and who's wrong? I don't know. But we've got a guy coming on to talk a little bit about Reiki in about 26 uh, minutes' time. Um, as this is my first like, late night programme, I wondered what you were doing at this very moment. Can you tell me? Are you, are you in bed watching on... There'd be, there'd, there'd be people who are watching in bed probably now. Are you in bed maybe watching on a laptop or, or, an, or an, uh, an iPad? Or for those of you without any money, a, 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 a Windows tablet? Are you watching on one of those devices? Are you sitting downstairs in the living room on a big screen? Maybe you're sitting there in front of your computer. But this is very different to our daytime show that we do on Saturday. Okay? Because it's like the end of the day, and I don't think you're going to go out and do anything later or you're rushing around to do anything. So, so this is going to be very different for me. And I must say, I've sat here since about half past nine, pulling all bits and pieces, bits of paper, all over the place. I am so disorganised, it's unbelievable. But I do have a little list of things here. So I wondered what you were doing at this very moment. Now, there's three ways that you can join in. Either by email... If you're watching the recording of the programme, uh, which means you're watching it on Thursday, sometime Thursday or indeed after, then uh, the only way to contact is by email. And you can always, uh, I always try and read that email out on the next show. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Those of you watching on Google Hangouts cannot call in with videos and things like that. That's not how this show works. What I wanted to do was a radio show with pictures. Do you see what I mean? All right. However, you can call in either by Skype. My Skype username is all one word, United Kingdom Talk. OK, Skype username, United Kingdom Talk. Or there is a local London phone number. And that number is 020 8144 Now, um, I hope at some point to get a little caption thing on the screen telling you the phone number but I haven't quite worked out how to do that yet we've got this I've got this brilliant piece of new software called vid blaster which I've just paid for cost an arm and a leg let me tell you that more money that we don't have dear it's all going out I should have to start shopping in Audi I will have to start shopping in Audi I can't afford to do both what well, eat properly from Waitrose and do video shows in fact there's a little story here look at this now are you a posh person are you posh? Look at this. Posh shows our no to Neto. This was on yesterday's sun. A posh village that thought it was getting a waitrose is outraged. Outraged. After, <laughs> after finding the new store will be a branch of discount chain Neto. Well, I'd move. I'd move. 
It goes on, developers told locals 10 months ago they were in talks with high-quality retailers. Of course, Waitrose is one of them. Uh, now it says merged at Danish chain known for cheap groceries. Uh, Netto is the mover. They are fuming. They are absolutely fuming. So what do you reckon on that? <laughs> there was a Netto in your town, or are you a Waitrose person, or a Sainsbury's person, or a Tesco's person? I'm a Waitrose person, I am. I don't mind admitting it. There's no shame in that. We go in there, we're greeted, me and my best friend Ron. We go in there, we're greeted by the staff. It's all wonderful. We have a cup of tea. I've got a cup of tea in there. We have a cup of tea in there. There's no more free tea in Waitrose. No. They were giving it away. Anyone that could come in. Um, oh, we've just got a call coming in here. Hello, Janet. Hello, Janet. Hello. Hello. Where are you, I my darling? I'm in Arizona. I am in the United States, on it, the other side of the pond. A welcome, Janet. And I'm listening to you on my desktop. Oh. My friend Craig, my oh, back up, slow down. My friend Craig Adams told me about your show, and I thought I'd give you a listen. Oh, hello, welcome. And you say you're where? In the United States, in Arizona, the hot state of Arizona. Is it hot there at the moment? Not really. It's overcast right now. Are you eating biscuits, you naughty lady? No, I'm drinking a bottle of Coke. I think you're... Oh, not with all that sugar, Janet. Oh, no. Actually, no. it's Coke Zero. No sugar. That's even worse. They put in something else in there to, 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 to um, uh, instead of the sugar, and I reckon that does all sorts. Now, what is it called? Is it aspartin or something like that? I don't know what they put in this. Look, I've been drinking diet Coke. I've been drinking sugar-free sodas for ages, and I ain't dead yet. <laughs> Do you know, that is exactly what I tell people when they say to me, oh, you know how people are, Janet. Oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Oh, no. And you, I'm, I'm still walking. You can't do this. Yeah. You can't do that. Don't you get fed up with them? Janet, do you work? What do you do? No, I'm kind of between jobs right now. Okay, and what, do you have a profession, or do you just do anything? I used to babysit kids and kind of burned out on it. You got fed up doing that, did you? Yeah. And did you do that for very long? Oh, yes. So now you're just looking for something completely different, maybe? Yeah. What's your dream job, Janet? Your dream job. What would you love to do more than anything else? Hmm. You ask me a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to think about it. I put you on the spot. Yes, you did. So you, you don't know, really, no? I really don't have a dream job. Oh, just one. Janet. I like people. So yes. I suppose my dream job would be with people. I like talking to people, and it's got a lot easier since the internet came along. Yeah. I've, a lot, the majority of my friends are on the internet. I could count on one hand the, my f true friends. Yes. I yes. met my best friend. Absolutely. Yeah. She lives in the state of Alabama. Right. I met her over the, over the internet in 2002. We have been friends for going on 13 years now. Ah. Uh, and where has she lived close by? No. She lives about 2,000 miles in the other direction. What, what sort of things do you do together? Do you have, like, shared interests? Uh, yes, we do. Because of financial, our financial situations, yeah. um, we had to suspend our yearly visits with each other. Okay. We'd alternate turns flying in and seeing each other. And due to circumstances beyond, beyond her control, she got financially strapped. Right. So she's been saving her money. I've been saving mine. So, we, But it's not like we don't see each other. I talk to her every night on Skype. On Skype and the, the old, uh, what's that thing on the app? Have you got an Apple phone? FaceTime is very good. That's no, I don't thing. have an Apple phone. I just have a plain old Android. Oh, well, that does for you, doesn't it? As long as the Skype works and you can see people at the other end. Yep. Uh, me and uh, a friend of mine, we had one of the very first video phones. It was from a company called Three. Now, this is going back some years. And basically, if you signed up with them, they gave you two phones, right? So I think I gave one to him and I had the other one. And these were like a flips, a flip you know, like flip a flip phone. Yeah, yes, flip phone. The... 
And underneath basic it, flip phone. Yes, and underneath it had a complete QWERTY keyboard, which ah. you could type in your bits and pieces. But it was also supposed to be a video phone. And do you know what? We were only able to ever get that working twice. <laughs> and you could you could just well, about work out that the silhouette of the person at the other end who it was. Now, you might be watching this. Well, I mean, what's the quality of this like? It's like watching a television, isn't it? Yes, it is. Isn't it unbelievable how far we've come? Soon, holograms, I think. You know, I'll be able to be standing in your room helping you chop up those vegetables and make your dinner. <laughs> hey, take a look at all the other science fiction stuff that's become facts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, Janet, it's been a pleasure talking to you, my darling. Okay, and I'll put you in my contact list. I hope you can stay with us, all right? All right, I will stay with you. Lots of love, Janet. Bye-bye, darling. Thank you. There we are, lovely. Janet's sitting there watching on her desktop at the moment. Uh, Shania. Now, I happen to know the Shania because I was just having a little look on her uh, uh, Facebook wall. Shania is r apparently writing two essays while she's listening to this show. How on earth are you doing? I can't do two things at a time that time like that. How do you do that, Shania? Write an essay and listen to a chat show at the same time. I'll tell you what, I've done that before. Um, uh, I've done a similar thing before. You know when you're watching a TV program? And you've got your mobile phone next to you. And you keep look, and you look at your phone and you send a message. And then you look back at the TV and you think, how did you get to that point? Do you know what I mean? How did I kind of get there? So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you can do two things at the same time tonight. But she says, I'm watching in bed on a laptop doing my religious studies essay while watching you. So she's in bed at the moment, nice and cosy, isn't it? Oh, have you got an electric blanket? I must say, since I had my new boiler put in, um, I turned my electric blanket off. I don't worry about that anymore because I'm always quite warm in bed. Uh, Wendy, good morning, Wendy. Good evening, Wendy, who says that she loves the cuckoo clock. Morning, Wendy. And she says, I'm curled up on the sofa with my dog, Max. Max? Hello, Max, the dog. All right, Max. Uh, we've got another call here. Good morning. Who's that? Who do you think? Oh, good morning. It's best friend Ron. Hello. Hello, I, dear. I see, How are you? Please don't talk for too long because people do seem to drop off while you're chatting away, including that so. lady in the car place earlier. Mm, I'm just ringing to say I hope everything goes all right tonight and it's seamless for you, dear. Seamless. Seamless, just like my DJing from one tune to the other. You know, with that, <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Without even oh, realising. 25 years you've winged you wing that, dear. 25 uh, years. Wing it? Funny enough, I'm just laying in bed with, with Louis the cat. And what device are you watching on? Uh, I'm watching on my uh, iPhone 6 Plus. Oh you're, I've, oh, you're not on your iPad then? Was my picture too big for that, was it? Um, well, it's your nose, dear. It's rather large for that. Was it? Oh, I'm disappointed. Uh, yeah. So... But, um, yeah, I just had a little listen. I do like the American accent of the, the, the lady from Arizona. That, that was Janet. Arizona. Yeah. I always Arizona. imagine... I always... I should have asked her, really. I always imagine Arizona to have, like, tumbleweeds blowing down, like, a, a dusty path and, like, big wooden yeah, buildings and loads of... Like the Western stuff, but yeah. I'd like to... I'd, I like the accents. I'd like to go to the deep south. I'd probably get strung up for being a... Being a Jew and being being gay, but well, no, you'd be strung you know, up. I'd for, like to visit. You'd be strung up for being an idiot. That's what you'd been strung up for. I'm not an idiot. I'm far from an. You idiot. wouldn't be strung up for anything. Else. You'd be be strung up for being an ear hole. Fashionable. <laughs> Thank you for calling. <laughs> I like yourself. Anyway, as I say, I'm ringing just to say good luck, and I hope everything works seamlessly for you on your new adventure. Do try and stay with us this evening, dear. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> dear. There we are. Best friend Ron. That's nice of him to call in like that. He's, he's a Waitrose person as well. I did notice, actually, uh, my second favourite supermarket is Asda. And I was in there um, a few, about two weeks ago at night, because I go there at night, there's no one around. And all of a sudden, all the lights were... I mean, I thought it was the end of the world. All the lights suddenly went dim. So I rushed over 
to the checkout. I said, oh, has someone forgot to put money in the media? She says, no, at midnight, or it was either 11 o'clock or midnight, I can't remember the exact time. At midnight, um, they said, uh, uh, she said to me, the lights go down automatically to save energy. But, which I understand, but there's people in there. What the hell's all that about? Why would you be turning the lights down when there are people in there? How strange is that? Anyway, uh, so that's it. Let's uh, say hello to another couple of people. Um, uh, who else is listening where? Oh, good morning to Brandon this morning. Brandon in Croydon who says, just in time for your show, can't beat that countdown music. I'd love to send you a copy of that, the countdown music, all right? Uh, hello to Ted who tells us that Reiki is pronounced Reiki, R-A-Y-K-E-Y. That's how you pronounce it, but it's actually R-E-I-K-I, -E -I, okay? That's, that's how we do Reiki. And we've got, uh, indeed, Alfie coming on to talk with us uh, about that in a little bit, and you will be able to contact him as well. Shania says, when I'm at home, I need noise to help me concentrate. You are the perfect solution. <laughs> is that all I am, noise? Thank you. Uh, Janet who's in Arizona, says it does indeed have tumbleweed going down the uh, down those dusty roads in parts. So we're right about that sort of impression we've got of Arizona there. Uh, Paul Edwards, who does his own chat show. Hello, Paul, who says, um, hello, Chris, from Middle England. And hello to all of your listeners. Waitrose shopping, then a Sports Direct mug. You are a posh chav. Yeah, this programme is not sponsored by Sports Direct. I just want to say that. And we do not endorse any of its products, although I do shop there a lot. Because they, they need to be paying me. They would need to be paying me if, um, if, if I'm going to mention like that. Uh, Wendy says, tell Brandon he's got to keep his promise and phone in later on. I hope so, Brandon. I do hope you'll be calling in a little bit later on. Uh, good morning to Matt Martins, who's in Canada who says, video appears a tad behind the audio. You may want to check if the other uh, viewers are experiencing. So is the audio a little bit, a little bit lagging? Perhaps someone else could uh, tell us that as well. Uh, Anne says, loving that gorgeous pink shirt. Love men that wear pink shirts. Do you like this pink shirt? It's, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a movie pink, isn't it? Um, we'll be solving all our love life problems as I thought I was turning into an agony uncle. What you want to, you want me to do agony things on something like that. Matt also says in Canada, he's on, I'm on multiple TVs in our home. I'm watching in one room and my wife and her friends are watching in another. Hello, wife and friends. What room are you in? Why are you in different... Have you had a row? Why are you in different rooms at the moment? <laughs> have you had a row? Is that why... Or, or, or can you not stand so many ladies talking together in one room? That's, that's what it is, isn't it, Matthew? Uh, another call coming here. It's Marge. Hello, Marge, in Oklahoma, USA. Hello, Marge. Hello. Are you hearing me okay? Yes, we hear you perfectly, my darling. How are you? Um, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm having a heck of a time here. My Windows 7 I installed doesn't like Skype. And you know what I'm talking to you on? Yes. It's my tablet. Oh, really? Yeah. So that, that means you haven't got a, a little headset on and all that business. Well, I don't got the headset on, but I don't. I was fix, fixing to hook it up. Right. Okay. And I thought, well, I better sit here while it's working, not me. <laughs> Felt like your little, little little tragedies, you know, trying to get everything to working. So uh, anyway, I better leave it alone. <laughs> well, it all got working. I've got your email here. I'm going to read out in a little bit after we've talked to our oh, well. friend about yeah, Reiki. Yeah, don't get time. Don't worry about it. I was not going to call in because I, I, the Skype was working, but then tonight I thought maybe it was my uh, internet. But yeah. heck, I'm I'm talking to, on a forty dollar tablet. Is it is it an it's, old tablet that you've tried to put Windows Seven on or or what? No, no, it's the computer. It was working fine on the no, the computer's a an, an older computer, but what happened? Um, I updated Windows Seven. And it slowed it down. I'm going to undo, undo a lot of the updates. Sometimes, right. it's like my brother always told me. He said, so, never fix nothing if it's not broke. Oh, yes. I absolutely <laughs> agree. I tend not really now to update software unless it's one of those security updates. 
yeah, because I've I've is, found I, yeah. I think it yeah. updated my my driver yes. or something because it it is bogging down like crazy. Yes, yes. So I'm gonna do a restore. Just go back. It was working great. I had I took two hours last week when you had your little problem. I was worked two hours to get my headset to work with the Windows Seven. Yeah. And I sit here ready. You know, I've got my notes so and everything. And, can, and are you trying? Quit at the same time. How old huh? is How old is the computer that you're trying to put Windows Seven on? Oh, um, I really don't know. I gave ten dollars for it. <laughs> that's probably that, that's the problem. Then it can't handle the. You, you've got to. No, uh, everything's I, fine. It's got good ratings. It was working great till I, I was, updated it. Only the sky. Well, I, can you roll back? Can you roll it back? I I can roll it back. If I don't, I'll just wipe it out and start over. <laughs> Oh, okay, really, yeah, fair That's enough. what I like about my old stuff, see, because I yeah. can just do what I want to. Our I got friend... five computers for 10 bucks. Actually, not even $10, because I yeah. got five of them. They had no hard drives, no memory, nothing, you know, and I had oh. all that stuff in a drawer. I well, said, I, well, I, had, I, had I love it. tinkering, so I, I put it together, and it works great. It's been working great, and I had my Skype working fine, and then to yesterday, I went, it's, you know, I thought, well, maybe I'll update a few things. And now it's just going to crap. I said, I should have left it alone. Well, I... <laughs> it's working fine. <laughs> anyway, I, I had don't a... want to take up too much of your time. I had a list of things. Uh, how much longer do you want me to talk? I, I had, a, to I had a Sinclair Spectrum. Do you remember those? You had one of those? What's that? Sinclair Spectrum. Do you remember those? What is that? It's a, it's a computer, Sinclair Spectrum. Maybe they didn't Never have those heard in the States. Of it. No? I've never heard of it. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. Well, that was oof. that was back in the eighties. It was the one of the very first, if not the first, kind of personal little computer. And it had a rubber keypad, oh. and it was made by an Englishman, Sing, uh, uh, Sir Clive Sinclair. And oh, uh, yeah, that that I had one of those little thing. It was. Well, my first one. I was so I, I've been a, a a science fiction fanatic. You know, Star Trek. And I, I thought, well, I was born in the wrong time period because I knew we were uh, going to have computers, you know. And what a shame and about to, what a shame about Leonard, Leonard Nimoy left us recently, didn't he? Oh, he did? Mm. Leonard Nimoy? Yeah, do you not know? No. Yeah, he died a few weeks ago. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, my yeah, God. yeah, yeah. I was in love with him at eight years old. That might that have killed me. <laughs> oh well, he at least he had a good life. I knew he had that COPD. My mother had all That's that. That's right. You know? Yes, he had that. And he had that. Yeah. It's like you slowly can't breathe. So yes, yes. he's had a great life. Well, that mm. that kills me because I was in love with him since I, I'm 55 years old, and I've loved. I see love. I mean, I really love oh. that man. I watched every movie. He was my yep. favorite actor. You know. You're a little bit well, in front of me, aren't you, Marge? Not too far, though. A little bit in front. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a lot healthier than I am. Thank goodness. You you eat all those vegetables and and get off of meat and and, yeah. and lose weight. I mean, it's not your number on the calendar. It's uh, how well you take care of yourself. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I know, think so. Not how many miles you got on the car. It's how well you take That's care right. of it. That's right. No, you're you're so <laughs> right, Marge. All right, my yeah. darling. Um, I might come back to you later on. I'm not quite sure how long we're going to yeah. do tonight. We we might do. Um... I'll let I'm, I'll let my list for next time I call in. I was so happy that my my little forty dollar uh, tablet here let me talk to you. Well, it's tonight. working and fine. I'm glad you got your, That's glad one of the because you uh, you've called in a, going. <laughs> you, call, you called in a few times recently, and it hasn't been too good on 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 the Saturday shows. Uh, this has been the yeah. best you've sounded, actually. This particular okay, call. Just keep using the tablet. It feels weird to talk yes. to a tablet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. does feel weird because I'm talking to a screen, you know. <laughs> of course, I've got I've got allergies too. I've been, you know, sore throat. So, and I sound like an old hick in the woods. You don't so. sound like an old hick at all. Go on, get off you. An old witch out in the woods. Go on, get <laughs> off. <18 cats. laughs> See you later, Marge. I got 18 cats, so, you know. Well, hon, I'm, I'm glad you got back to going, because I've had withdrawal all week waiting for you to get back going, because <laughs> I know how that was. <laughs> Cheerio, Marge. Okay, I might I'll talk to you later to you if we get some more time, all right? Great thing. Bye-bye. This is Marge from Oklahoma signing off. Yeehaw! Oh, Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. It does indeed, Desert Marge in Oklahoma. Uh, yes, indeed, Janet said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, absolutely. I go along with that. How many times have we seen someone 
trying um, to repair something, whatever it is, whether it's a gadget, a computer, perhaps a night or a job, and everything's working. I think, oh no, if we do that, we'll see if it gets back, and it, and it kills it stone dead, doesn't it? How many times have we seen that? Yes, uh, and Janet said he did in die uh, of complications from the OPCD. Uh, another little fact from Oklahoma, they filmed the desert scenes in Return of the Jedi. Were you a Star Wars person? I was a Star Trek person. There were very few people that like both, actually. A very, very few people who actually like both um, Star Trek and Star Wars. Uh, hello to Sean, who says, Nice to have you on the screen. Can you do your cat impression again? Please, so funny, like last time. What cat impression is that, then? <laughs> meow. 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 And when I get angry... <laughs> There's my cat impression, especially for Sean. <laughs> Wendy says she know, remembers the Sinclair Spectrum. She had one too. Her audio and uh, video are fine. So I think it's probably your machine there, my friend uh, Matt in Oklahoma. Although it's, brand it's buffering for Brandon. Do try and stay with us, Brandon, dear. Um, hello to Tom Harris, who's with us as well. Hello, Tom. Uh, Paul Edwards says my first computer was a Commodore 64. Oh, yes. Yes, that, that had the full kit, because that was quite exciting, because that was the first computer I saw with the full keyboard, as we know now, as I'm sitting here in front of a couple of keyboards at the moment. He said, I had no idea what to do with it when I got it, but once I did, there was no stopping me. You keep going, boy. You keep on going. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, Matt Martins says, too many ladies in one room, plus they needed someone to make dinner. So I was voted as a chef tonight. As a result, you are on big screen in the kitchen, as well as the living room. We are loving the live show at this hour, as it's currently just after six o'clock in part of Canada. Oh, talking of Canada, are you getting... Um, uh, are you getting the Northern Lights? Apparently, the Northern Lights are... Um, are around the UK at the moment tonight, which is interesting. Uh, good evening to Terry H, who says, uh, great quality, I'm in bed watching the TV. Yeah, oh, everyone's in bed. Everyone's in bed tonight. You have a lovely rest and let me do all the work, including Wendy likes my cat is. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay, another call now. Uh, this is Alfie. I can't remember where you are now, Alfie. Where are you? Oh, can't hear you. Alfie. Alfie? Hello? There you are. Say hello. Hello. That's hello, it. Got Chris. you. Sorry. My yeah, fault. I'm in Folkestone, Kent. Wrong, wrong, wrong fader. Hello, Alfie. Are you near the seaside? Yeah, five, ten minutes walk away from it. Oh, it's nice and easy for you then, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a little stroll down the road for me. Lovely. So, Alfie, um, one of the things we were going to talk about, because we were chatting to you for the first time uh, the other night on Facebook, about uh, Reiki, wasn't I? And you are into Reiki. Do you want to tell us what, it's, what it is all about first? What is Reiki exactly? Right, well before I go into Reiki, I've got a, a new, there's a, quite a wide range of things I talk about, but, but I've only come aware of Reiki in the last year, so I'm trying to work and practice towards Reiki healing yes. uh, for certificates so I can actually use it for my career and stuff like that. You want to actually, but, um, um, you want to actually practice this yourself, do you? Yeah, well, uh, it all, I'll tell you how it all started. It was in 2012, May time, 2012. Um, I moved back down from Herne Bay, that's another town in Kent. And uh, I was really depressed. And at the time, my dad was really ill, starting his COPD. And he was really ill. CIP, what is that, please? COPD. It's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, sort of he's got that as well. Sort of the briefing. And did that's he... uh, one of the main reasons why I was doing healing on him before he passed as well. Did he smoke? He did, inf He did. yeah. He did give up as well, but it was doing more damage to him when he was actually giving up. So mm, some... it did, he... he didn't have it hot, easy, but, you know, he did slip a good, good old age and things are meant to be in the world. I've learned a lot of things. I've took this opportunity now to um, tell everyone and who's listening and yourself about the about how I perceive the world and how my spiritual journey has awoken me, um, brought me further and brought me, brought me knowledge, wisdom and 
stuff you wouldn't even imagine to think as a human being like, like as I said I moved from Herne Bay down to Folkestone um, before I moved down to Folkestone my older brother um, I won't say his name because he's not here to listen but my older brother he, he knew there was something different from me to my other brothers for some reason there was something special or something different in that way um, I've got Asperger's syndrome, or they've labelled it as Asperger's syndrome. And so do that's you what I'm aware of. Just tell us what that is for people that might not um, know. Well, what I know of, because like I've learned that in, in the last few years, it's all pack for life, a uh, pack for lies in life. You only get told what you want to, what they want to be, um, beliefs sort of thing. So anyway, but it, I've done my investigation, and I know for myself as a kid, I had learning difficulties due to this. Uh, hit on the back of my head that I had when I was seven years old and I was put into a coma basically and I was rushed into Guy's Hospital in London and I was in Morsley Hospital for a good few years but I was in the coma for about four four weeks say well I was, I was told yeah. by my parents four weeks something like that mm. so thank god that I'll come out there yeah you and, were lucky oh, lucky to get out of there how did you get yeah. hit on the back of the head um, I was playing wrestling with my with my older sister's boyfriend. I was only like yeah. seven years old, yeah. so it was quite natural for me to play wrestling. Of at course, the time. of course, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I think about it now. If that didn't happen, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have had this opportunity now in my life mm. in the last few years to awaken because I haven't. I've not done the worst of in life. Because it is a it's a bad area around where I live in in Kent and as well as London and Birmingham. Oh really? And other cities. Yeah, uh, but and uh, you don't but you don't think of Folkestone like that actually? We, no, we, we don't know because I'm. It has changed in the last twenty years. Twenty yeah. years. It has changed a lot. It used to be a beautiful place. So how did you get onto the Reiki? Well, I went Reiki. to uh, when I moved back down to Folkestone, I went to a spiritual church in Dover at first yes. with my mum and my nan, her mum. And uh, basically, they came to me in a clairvoyant reading, in a psychic medium reading, right? and told me that my granddad was coming through. Now, the don't get me wrong, at this time, I wasn't a sceptic to all this uh, spiritual stuff. Yes. But I wasn't a believer because I've never experienced it, never so you had felt an anything. You had an open mind, yes? Yeah, I just had an open mind, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, so as this reading was coming through, in the l in like first few seconds, I yeah. was crying, or I was starting to emotion get emotional yeah, and start yeah. crying, and basically just use all my chakras, all the energy chakras, the energy discs that we got was was like basically exploding because it's my first reading, my psychic reading that I first ever got, and before that I was, like I said, I wasn't a skeptic, but I've never looked into it. I've been ignorant, if if I must like I must admit. I was being ignorant to a lot of stuff in life, and special, especially this spiritual stuff. Yeah. And due to the spiritual stuff, like my spirit guides, it ain't even spiritual stuff or spiritual life. Because mm. I wouldn't say I, was, I live like a person. They would say they're spiritual. I'm not spiritual like that, but I'm spiritually aware, and I know how to use my spiritual powers. Yes. And they're and they're communicated and channeled even. So I've been. Uh, yeah, I've been doing something tonight right. along the same lines. I've been trying to um, get my notes together because my first um, time talking to someone about what That's I know. That's all right. Yes, I've been like, to my friends about my about the stuff I know, but they don't want to hear it because they don't want to they don't want to know what's out there in the in the hidden world. But on the, the Reiki, what what is Reiki exactly? Tell us what it is. It's, it's channeled through energy. What Tell is it? What our spirit so if, guides. if I came to you and I said I want you to do Reiki on me, would okay. it, is that something okay. I'd say to you? Okay. Well, first, yep. Firstly, I could either place you on the bed yes. or you could sit on the a chair. Yes. And I'll stand behind you. I'd, there's uh, different ways of doing it, but I'd personally put my hands, hover them above your heads and your shoulders. Yeah. Yes. And start working from the top down to the bottom. So basically, it's just like grounding, as we call it, grounding ourselves to Mother Earth. And uh, one of my good friends, who uh, he does like one minute me show uh, thing on the show, and he talks about grounding. He's more educated in that arena. What like is ground? What is grounding? Basically, it's um, 
Uh, do you know what meditating is? <laughs> uh, praying, yes, yes. Yeah, it's like, it's not even praying, it's like um, just relaxing yourself, if yeah. I can put it that way. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put it away like I said, uh, well, I personally, I personally smoke weed at night time to help me meditate. Yeah. Like, I, that's my decision though. I'd never ask anyone out there to choose anything that I've done to do, what, to make you, what I've you, done. You like so to I let try. them, you like to let them make up their own mind, yes? Yes, yeah, that's it. Right. And I understand a lot of people do hear what I've got to say about the elite and the Illuminati bloodlines and well, the that, negative that, blood. That would be and, another show. We we'll just don't and, do the and ratings, they, right? And they do say that I'll get carried away with it. But the importance is, yeah, is these people that we don't understand are the people who are hiding and suppressing about Reiki in our schools. Right. Where over in America, in the posh private schools, where Freemasons have got children of their own or or the elite have got children, they're practicing occult magic, um, you know, like other, other stuff that we don't even want to dig deep and we don't want to talk about it really. But they should be talking about the Reiki and they should be doing like the way they preach. They preach about God and all this and all that. They bring out Christians, they bring um, the Christian churches and Catholics and all this stuff, the program religions, and they bring out Jehovah's Witnesses like with these silly policies and they just program people and it just upsets me and there's people out there like David Dyack of one person out of a million people now in the UK who are exposing this stuff and it's about time they do it. Now I'm not saying we should all go to war with the government um, or the elite or whatever but we should, we should be all common with common sense, use of energy and bring out a common law jurisdiction and not legal law because so, it's like making so, people So fight. Reiki is an energy, it's, is it? It's all about energy. And, what, and once, what, you, what once could, you discover what it, about Reiki and energy, you discover it, other stuff. What could it do for me? Say I've got something wrong with me. Maybe, um, oh, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to invite a problem now, and do you know what I mean? Say I've got right. something wrong with me, um, <clears throat> maybe some sort of a blood disease, perhaps. What could you do for me? Well, I could put my hands on your uh, shoulders or yes. your head, the crown chakra. I could put my hands on there and focus. As long yes. as you've got the good intentions, and then it'll work. But it's not like um, materialistic time. It's not... Like, if you want something done, you take a tablet, it's done in 10, 20 minutes time, and medication will uh, poison your pineal gland, which... And when, when your pineal gland, or your third eye even, so m most people understand it's your third eye, when, when that's poisoned, which it is for most of us, we are not aware of this Reiki or even the energy. And people shake each other's hands, and they don't even know. They are doing Reiki in a way. They're doing Reiki, because they're pushing hands and pulling hands, I and see, yes. It's yes. just all about energy, how it moves. So it's, it's not an instant... Around the, around it's not the universe an, as well. It's like not it's an instant infinite, infinite. thing. You have, you have to keep it up all the time, yeah? Yeah. I see. Like, um, it's, all, it's all down to how you eat as well. It's, Is it like I've, a... I've discovered loads of stuff about it. I'm only learning stuff about it myself, but a lot of people are being interested about what I say, so I continue to research, investigate, and ask about... Is it like a homeopathic type thing? Is 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 that what it it's, is? It's actually proven to like proven fact it can help um, things out there. I'm with you. Okay. Like um. Have you um? Like I said pain may. So have you it. have you had a go on anyone? Yeah, uh, I've. Uh, two have you... people that I didn't know. Yes. And my my, my mother and my partner and my dog, or my mum's dog. Sorry. You do oh and... pets as well. You do do you? Yeah, there's okay. a video actually on my YouTube channel um, of me heal hands on healing with my um, my mum's dog. He's uh, okay. staff, and he had an operation. Basically, he was chopped, and uh, I just done some put my hands on him on his head, and in about thirty seconds, not even that, uh, he starts moving his paw, oh. and that is to show you that the energy that I'm putting him in him with good attention and like good positive thoughts, I'm going to do something with it, that is how you're doing it, basically, Reiki, it's all about the intent, and as long as it's a good vibration, it's all about vibration that we're suppressed to know even on the BBC, yes. BBC was actually created to uh, keep us in that out know of 
you know. Yeah, we got that a little is what little the occult means. Got a little. That's me what the actual occult means. It means unhidden. We got a little message here from someone, yeah. uh, Sean, sure. who's listening, uh, who yeah. says, "I'm Asperger's too. Nice to hear another yeah. young lad, and we can't wait for for." Uh, another call. So we've got another person who's got uh, Asperger's uh, listening with us uh, this evening as well. I'll tell uh, you what, it's the best thing ever. I thought as a kid growing up, I thought I was completely different, which I was and always have been, always will be. And I always down myself all the time as a kid because I was suppressed to know what it's all about. And now I know about it, like the ins and outs. And it's yes. only a label to label us at yeah, a certain time. Yeah. yeah. Um, Terry H says, uh, we like your voice, uh, Alfie. You know, you've, you've got a nice voice on the radio. Thank you. Um, I hate it. <laughs> Paul says, uh, get Tom on to talk to this caller. Spiritualists and healers are his worst nightmares, he said. Been there with Dennis and it's all a load of rubbish. God bless you. God so, bless you. There we are. You know, <laughs> a, a, another thought from someone there. Uh, okay. Or I saw that. I, I'm assuming that bit at the bottom was just for the last couple of words. So, I appreciate all <laughs> feedback. Of course, of bad, course. Because at the end of the day, it, I need it for my, like you know, people call it CV. I need yep. it for myself in, and my, it, in my bank. Here you are, my friend. Look, even Janet, who called in earlier, she has Asperger's too. So there's a lot of you out there, my friend. I'll title the Aspies out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for talking to us. It's been a, a real pleasure, Alfie. Thank you very much. All right, real pleasure to Happy talk to you, my friend, down there in Folkestone. Stay with us, all right? Yeah, will do. Cheerio, Alfie. Cheerio. Bye-bye. Alfie talking a little bit there about his uh, Asperger's. It's nice to be able to share. What I like, uh, uh, what I want this show to be about stories, about your stories, bits of stories from the paper. We all love stories, don't we? And let's face it, it's a lot easier than buying a book and starting to flick through that. Oh, I can't read books. Um, <clears throat> some messages are coming in. Let's just do these. Uh, oh, Marge says, audio and video, we get 10 out of 10. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, Matt says, on the subject of the Northern Light, yes, Chris, the Northern Lights in Canada have been the brightest and the most active lights I have ever seen. See, I've never seen Northern Lights. Now, apparently, they have been across the UK for, uh, the, I think, last night. and They are there tonight but I'm completely covered in clouds, so I can't see anything. I'd love to see the Northern Lights. What a spectacular thing that would be. Uh, I'm going to read some of your messages now because uh, they're, they're kind of building up a little bit. Uh, yes, Terry, I thought you'd like that comment, Terry. Uh, Tom says, uh, here in the US, we have had the Timex Sinclair, which is probably the same as your um, uh, Sinclair Spectrum computer. Yeah, that would be back in the 80s. It's a long time ago now, Tom. He says, it never caught on here. I suspect people didn't like the membrane keyboard. There's, there's a word I like, membrane. I like that, membrane. Sorry, did <laughs> I thought it was just, just the word at the end, Paul. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry about it. Hello to Anne, lovely Anne. <clears throat> She's got a few messages coming through there, who says, Good morning from South London. Chris, do you think you might have hay fever? Yes, I would listen to your late night chat show. I had Weetabix this morning. Haven't had it in years, but it tastes like wallpaper paste. <laughs> what, Weetabix? Weetabix is not... What do you mean it tastes like... Well, well you, you're not supposed to melt the Weetabix, you silly woman. Honestly, you're supposed to put the milk on and then eat, you know, break it up as you eat it. Sure, I'm sure you're not, <laughs> you're not supposed to smash it down into a paste, dear. No wonder it's like wheat, no wonder it's like wallpaper paste. What are you doing with your breakfast? She says her internet collection has been so bad today, so I missed most of the show so far. I'm on my iPad now listening. Um, uh, so there we are. she's on the iPad. Is it working on your iPad? She's had terrible trouble. Anne, I've been looking at your Facebook page. I might read it all later. Uh, your, she says, your screen and your phone keeps going in and out of focus a bit. That might be, I think that's you, to be honest, because uh, other people can see it as well. She's had a family funeral. How dare you leave your law viewers to bring Ronnie his dinner? Not impressed. <laughs> Hang on a minute, am I reading, I'm reading the wrong shot. I'm reading the wrong messages from Anne. I'll come back to you in a minute. Meantime, we've got uh, Ted on the line. Hello, Ted. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Whereabouts are you? Hello, Chris. I'm actually just up the road from Alfie, um, who is a dear, dear friend of mine. And I just 
glad to have this opportunity to talk to you and, and yes. perhaps do a little backup for Alfie and what he was talking about. Please do, Ted, yes. Um, essentially, Reiki, as it's pronounced, and you got there several times, um, it is actually the universal life force energy that people like Alfie and myself can channel down from an energetic um, pool of energy that exists out in the universe. It sounds quite sort of random or whatever, um, but it's an incredibly powerful form of healing which people like Alfie and myself and many others simply channel down through ourselves, through our hands. It's basically old school hands-on healing, um, which is highly effective. It certainly exists and uh yeah alfie you know i'm so pleased and thank you for having me on the show because this lad is a phenomenon in his own right he's um he, you heard his sort of part of his life history of where he's been and where he's at now and he's come um, a long way and he's come a long way in a very short time and you know when younger people come in on on the spiritual journey it's very encouraging because uh and certainly with somebody like alfie because He's got something, he's, he, he's on track, um, and he's going to do a lot of good out there, and he is going to become a known individual out in the world, I, I can assure you. Um, one of his greatest loves, in a sense, is the man that is and was, well, still is, David Icke. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, uh, I, I'm kind of known on the airwaves because I do other radio shows. Um, Ted, I, I, Ted I'm, lo I'm looking at your picture, and I'm yep. assuming you're one of those, like me, who remembers young David Icke on Grandstand. I remember David, and I've had this wonderful experience, actually, of after all the life journey that, that David took, back in the day when he was on Wogan, and yes, he got yes. all that crap from the yep. character. I remember I, that. You know, and everybody does remember it, because he seemed to be proclaiming that he was the son of God, and he was coming out with all what appeared to be, uh, you know, a bit of bull, bull crap sort of thing. Um, but, you know, I swear to God, and I've said this to people over the years, that right from day one, I thought, this guy's got something. You guy, you folks need to be listening to him. Well, I tell you what, one, he's had the last laugh because he fills Wembley Arena now with 11,000 people, yeah. okay, and gets his word out there, and he has, he is on the money. I've also, secondly, had the wonderful experience of actually working with David Icke up in Wembley when he brought the People's Voice to the UK, um, seventh what, what floor is, of Wembley Point. Can you just, I, just... I met the guy. Tell yep, us what sorry. the People's Voice is, please. Uh, the People's Voice was uh, an internet-based uh, TV radio station where he was trying to sort of uh, get out to the world about the Illuminati that Alfie touched on, about spirituality, about conspiracy theories and all of this. I mean, David Icke has got a whole fund of information in his head that he's trying to get out there. Yes, but yes. Because he doesn't trust the mainstream media, quite the reverse. Um, he set up his own radio, TV, yeah. internet thing, and he got a lot of charitable sort of um, input financially. Ultimately, uh, you, you know, you can imagine how expensive it is to run a TV, radio, sort of studios or whatever. So although it still exists, the people's voice and the ethos is still running, um, it doesn't actually exist on the seventh floor at Wembley Point anymore. Um, but I worked up there. I'm a Reiki master. I'm a psychic surgeon. I'm the Rev Ted. People know me sort of around the country and, and uh, more, more and more globally. And I work with the guy, and he is a phenomenon. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. He's, you know, he's a, <laughs> well, I thought he was a goalkeeper. Well, he was a goalkeeper back in the day. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I just imagined this short, short guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and <laughs> from, from my left, this man, large man, loomed at the same height as me because I'm quite a big fella. Um, and with big hands and big, strong sort of grip. I quite, I quite um, like him. I, I like his his persona and all that. I I've looked a few times at the the website, um, but to me it, it it looks very messy and it's difficult to find things that you want. On the other hand, what are you looking for? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I, I find it a little what... bit messy the website, but I do like. I, I have an open mind on everything. 
Everything. This, this guy is a fascinating man. I'm not stupid, but you have to concentrate like crazy if he engages <clears throat> you in conversation. Right. Um, and also, that would be symptomatic of his mindset, in fairness, because I spent a lot of time around him, that he has got so much information, it does rather go all over the universe, all over the globe, all yeah. over different countries, all different random thoughts, which he tries to bring together and give to the world, um, but it can be a bit intense, to say the least. But, hey, I thought filled a bucket list um, thing that I wanted to do. I got my hands on the guy, did some healing on him two or three occasions. I engaged with him, talked with him, spent time with him, and he is a true phenomenon. Coming back briefly to Alfie, I've got to say, you know, there's this man from Folkestone who's come on your show. He was very excited, and I'm not surprised, because the first time I went on radio, it was like, oh, my God, I've got the opportunity to put my point of view across and say what's happening to me. And if you can imagine, when you discover spirituality and how it changes your life and how much good you can do for people by channeling this spiritual universe and energy, which I appreciate sounds rather random, but in the old school, hands-on healing way that's been practiced for centuries, hey, that opens up your world. And Alfie is going to go places. He is not dissimilar to David Icke in his outlook and his, his desire and his passion and his willingness to get out there and tell people about this. And he goes goes off and he studies it he does um he's done this show i mean you've opened up a big thing for him tonight chris for which i thank you because you know i've kind of taken alfie a little bit under my wing in, in that way because i've recognized he's not qualified per se he's not certificated per se but he's got it as a natural born medicine man healer and he will go places and it won't be long before he is known uh, around the country, around the world, as a phenomenon in his own right. And he'll probably be blushing like crazy at hearing me saying this, <laughs> but I know that the guy has got something. Um, and it's a delight for me as a professional certificated and experienced healer in my own right with contacts around the world to try and get the word out there to people that, look, old school hands-on healing works. And yes, when you were saying, well, you know, would it work for me with a blood disorder? Yes, because it's the most powerful divine energy that we're blessed to channel through us. Now, one more thing I'll say to you, because I won't dominate the show, and I can talk for England, trust me, because I do. If I may say show. so, if I may say so, Ted, you speak yes. really well, really well. Yeah. I've been, I've been also told I've got a great face for radio. <laughs> I was, I've been told that in the last few years. I was all right, you know, 20 years ago, but I'm starting to see little lines and things, and I don't know if I've done the right thing switching the camera to high definition, to be honest. Because when you... <laughs> <laughs> you actually have, um, I'm, I'm seeing on the screen now, I appreciate there's a, a slight time delay yes, between, will be, yeah, and, yeah. and you're nodding a couple of seconds after I've said <laughs> something, but no, I, I like the, the backdrop, and uh, no, you, you come across absolutely fine, and uh, yeah, I took it as a compliment to start with, and then you sort of think for a moment, you think, hey, just a bloody minute, um, but yes, uh, where was I, oh yeah, essentially about, look, in my past, I worked in the prisons. I worked in Brixton Prison, Belnarsh Heights Security Prison. I'm basically down to earth. I don't believe everything that I, I hear or, or, or whatever. But in the stone cold light of day, when you're sober and you've got your eyes open and your senses open, I have seen and witnessed some extraordinary things. And I can tell the world that old school, as I call it, hands on healing, no messing with good intention, no ego and channeling this energy, which absolutely exists. I and others can do some amazing things. I'll make no claims of cures. But I will make claims to the fact that people who come to me in pain leave without pain. I've had a little old lady who struggled down the steps into a shop I was working at, who then go up the steps without their sticks and almost fly up the steps. Do you, old do, school hands-on healing works. Do you do, back, do you do do you do back problems? I do back problems. Backs actually tend to be very prevalent in this country, and I have yes. a lot of clients with back issues. I have people with RSI and wrist issues. Um, it, and, and at the end of the day, it's not me doing it like, like Alfie was explaining. I am channeling this from a far, far more powerful energy source that is up there as we view it. We always look up there to the heavens yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And yes, I'm going to go one step further and explain to you that I work with the angels and the archangels. How random is that? But hey, this is a man who was a screw for 12 years, yeah. who's now saying, look, actually, there are archangels, there are angels, I do channel from a, from a higher source, and yes, they will, with love and light and with this energy, 
channel through you with with whatever and it works and the and you know the last few days there's been this thing about antibiotics on the nhs and that they we're becoming more and more resistant to antibiotics and that all these advances in medicine now um they're going to come to naught chris if we're not careful because yes yes Yes, they are. And, you know, you have a heart situation, you have a hip replacement or whatever. If you haven't got the antibiotics that work for, um, for preventing um, disease creeping in, then you're buggered. So, hey, holistic practitioners, therapists and healers and spiritual people are going to come into their own in the next few years because we are the people that folk will turn to. Um, and, and that's good because this has been practiced for centuries. The Chinese, the, the, um, the Native Americans have done natural hands-on and they've used herbs, they've used, they, they um, respect the earth uh, and all its products and whatever. So there is this change in people. There is this sea change going on, realizing that, one, the government aren't working to our best interests. We are um, dumbed down by, uh, you know, fluoride in our water and all of this, that we are lied to about going to war in other countries. And the spiritual healing aspect, you won't, you won't hear me on the BBC because they don't want people like me on there. Uh, they don't want David Icke on there because, oh, he's controversial. He's saying that you're all talking bo uh, rubbish. You know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a crazy world we live in, but I tell you what, the, the true spirituality that has been around, as I say, for centuries from time immemorial is coming into its own now. And if there's an area of life that couldn't be more wonderful, what's more wonderful than taking someone's pain away? Yes, what's more yes. wonderful than helping them and remove their dis-ease, which is all it is, it's dis -ease ease in the disease tell, going on tell me um, is it is it also your job i mean do you charge for this or do you know this how, is, how does it work <laughs> how does it work do you know for years and years and years i bought against charging for it because when you have a gift that is given to you from let's say above personally i didn't want to charge for it because it's like a blessing it's like you know it's a gift isn't it yes and then over the years people have said look it's all about energy and money is an energy so an exchange of energy is probably prudent to do i still balk at it when somebody says how much was that i'm generally saying contribution is good whatever you feel it was worth to you etc right. etc Sometimes, if I do a fair, a psychic fair on event, I will say a £10 tester session. If somebody's coming to my home, I may say £20, but it is so not about the money. Now, you will talk to other healers who will say, yes, because it's an income, because it's my business, I have to charge. And fair dues, because it can cost you hundreds of pounds to be trained um, and certificated and pay for your insurance. In my case, I don't like the money aspect of it. Okay. And although I appreciate energetically I should take it, I don't like to, but I do. And at the end of the day, it depends on the uh, how much money the person's got. If you're a little old lady who's on a pension, hey, you right. know, what's it yeah. worth to your fiver? Or look, don't worry about it. Pay me something next time and, and you forget I, it. So, I have to say, you know, I've got a completely open mind. I'd probably come and try it. I absolutely excellent. would. Um, do you want a couple of messages from people? Uh, a couple of messages in? out there. I know so many people, it's terribly nice, but let's say a shout out to Era Parisienne. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, you get gone, you give your shouts, and I'll, um, I'll ask you again. What was the question? Uh, <laughs> no, there, there was a, a couple of messages coming in from people here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go um, for it. Anne, where has she gone there? Let me just okay. bring that back up there. Anne, uh, there we are. Says, I'm very spiritual too, Chris. I and can cure a lot of people's problems just by being nice and loving and full of empathy. She's also been to see David Icke. Icke has his merits, but is also a flawed man in my opinion. What do you say to that? I agree with her on every part of what she's saying. Uh, David is in urgent need of healing. Yeah. He was when I saw him. He was when I gave him three sessions of it. Um, he is troubled about certain aspects of humanity and that the world is uh, sort of against him. Uh, and, uh, you know, in fairness, there are hundreds of thousands of people who are for him and there are hundreds of thousands of people who berate him and give him 
a real hard time. Well, for one man to cope with all of that, good on him. But yes, he is flawed. He's not right on everything. His, his, um, the way he puts his message across is not necessarily the way I would do it. I'd like to spend some time with the guy and say, look, you know, uh, I'm just one man, but uh, I I'll, I'll, point I'll, in that direction here. Um, and also empathy and natural love and 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 healing is not just about hands on it is about how you approach people just an arm around them sometimes being there at the end of the phone healing has so many different facets to it it doesn't have to be reiki or have a, an attachment put to it or a name put to it it's about love light intention intention like alfie was saying is so important if you've got the right intent it can create wonders we are, we are all flawed in some way don't you think absolutely, we are. Um, absolutely. There's, there's another one here from paul um you're you okay to answer these that they're, they're absolutely all absolutely delighted you know, different to. okay paul oh just a minute the cuckoo clock <laughs> here he comes do you like that I, I absolutely do. I hope you're not suggesting we're all cuckoos. <laughs> no, I've got a... <laughs> it's playing its little tune now. I've got a cuckoo clock behind me. Wonderful. You know what I'm going to do, Chris? I'm going to go on Facebook after this and say, the moment I'm in the middle of a radio show and Chris sets off his cuckoo <laughs> clock in apostrophe. Thank you for that. Uh, no, you just I'm don't... as mad as the next man. That, that's the midnight. I am very mad. Okay, <laughs> so Paul is not on your side at all. He says... Um, uh, it's all rubbish. Reiki healing is weird, like the sad people that they, that claim they can do it. Yes, uh, tell him I think it's money making, not healing. Load of rubbish. Why is it that a welder, for example, can suddenly become a Reiki healer with no training? It's just about a calling from from where? It's all about money. What would you say to that? Uh what was the name of this guy uh paul paul no because i'll address him by name i have no problem with it with an attitude like that and i can see where he's coming from because there's an element of fear about the unknown and if he'd listened to me saying about the money aspect from my perspective and many other healers perspective it is not about the money it's the same as readers of psychic tarot and all of that sort of thing if they say look that's 50 quid and then you've got to come back in a week it'll be another 50 quid and they go on your weaknesses and your fears then that's balderdash but when it's genuine uncharged for natural born healing Hey, he can continue to think it's rubbish, but what I would challenge him to do, should he decide to, but he may not, and it doesn't matter. It so doesn't matter. If he wants to come and go to a professional such as myself, I'll show him what it does. If he comes to me with a, you know, an injured knee or a lower back injury or whatever, and I help him, that's to his good. Um, it, it isn't about the money, and uh, he may expect me to jump about and scream and shout about it, but it, one, it's not about the money. It is a God, it, uh, it's a blessing that one is given. Um, I have experienced it with my own eyes, what, what the results are of not just what I do, but what others do. Um, I know what I see with my own eyes. I know what I feel within me. I know I feel the hot palms. If I put my hands on someone and say to them, what do you feel other than normal hand warmth? Is it hot, cold, or nothing at all? Tell me the truth. And they say it's hot, great. If they say it's cold, that's fine. If they feel nothing at all, doesn't mean it's not working. So it isn't rubbish. It isn't about the money. Give it a try. Um, perhaps, you know, I understand there are cynics out there and they just go, it's all boulder dash. And you will get people who are like that because there is an element of fear of the unknown about it. It's not that, it's not spooky at all. It's done in the cold light of day. You don't have to be behind darkened curtains You're in the dark. It's in the light. You can speak while healing is being given to you. You can have your eyes wide open or you can shut your eyes and be quiet and receive it as, as whatever. And the fact is, while I'm talking now, he'll be receiving an element of distant healing, but that'll probably throw his head like, oh my God, what's this guy talking about? Um, I'm rational, I'm down to earth, I've worked in the prisons, I'm not a nutter um, any more than, you know, I'm just a normal guy who lives 200 yards from the coast, and I recognise that there is this extraordinary strength um, I, I could quote any number of, of situations where, where people have been helped. And like I say, at the end of the day, if somebody's sceptical, cynical, or even downright rude, it doesn't actually matter because I know it works, my clients know it works, the people in my zone know it works, and they're doing good in love and light, and it ain't about the money. Thank you, Ted. Uh, some more here. Brandon says, I don't believe in it, but I would certainly give it a go. Um, 
that's better. And if you've got the open mind to give it a go, then you can learn to believe in it. But even if you give it a go and it appears to work and you still don't believe in it, it doesn't matter because it's benefited you. But it's better than the closed mind of saying, well, look, it's all, I can't, I don't know what I can say bollocks on there, but you'll cut that out if I'm not allowed to say it. But if, <laughs> if you actually do think it's a load of old bull, um, so be it. It so doesn't matter because for every one detractor, there are a hundred people who go, Oh my goodness, I gave it a go with an open mind and actually I felt something. Some people say, I really felt something. Some people go, okay, here's one example of a woman who two years ago came to me and I didn't know her from Adam. I met her in a charity shop, offered my services. Two years later, she came back to me and she said, Ted, you changed my life because I could barely walk. Two years later, I am dancing again. I couldn't dance before. Yeah. To me, no money matters in that no, situation. No. The woman's up and dancing and her life changed. The same woman's um, daughter came to me a year ago. Uh, I'd been told by the doctors that she couldn't conceive and would never have children again. The, the lady comes back to me a few weeks ago with an MP4 player of the baby's heartbeat in the belly and transformed her life because something along the line made the, I mean, I didn't impregnate the woman, I might add. I, <laughs> I, accept, I, I ought to make that absolutely clear. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, there's the thing, you see, because you keep the purity of it that you don't, you know, I know we're joking around or whatever, but actually it, it's done with the right intention, with no ego, and there's no sort of going there professionally yes. as, you know, kidding around, whatever. Um, at the end of the day, this, this girl has, for, uh, as I had said to her, you will, you know, I, I sense that you will conceive in the future. They didn't believe it, and then bang, a year later... There was a child. Uh, there, there was a, a child. child on the way. Hello, some, you know, that's yeah, awesome yeah. stuff. Um, some, some more so, here. Yep. Some, some more here, Ted. Um, this is from Matt in Canada, who says, uh, As a Christian, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I also have found that I have the gift of healing, and I've seen quite a high number of miracles in my short time here on Earth. I completely agree with Ted that as a gift given to us from above, we should feel so very excited to share it with others. Absolutely. Um, and not just because Matt's agreeing with me, but I do agree with what he's saying and, and his words are my words, that, hey, if it, it, it is, as I believe, a, a gift from God. I was brought up as a Christian in this country. I remain a Christian. I believe that Jesus Christ walked, Christ walked the, the earth plane 2,000 years ago. But I, I, I also um, open my heart to, to the Buddhist possibilities, to, to Muslims, to mm. Methodists, to every sort of... There, there's so many varieties yes, of, yes. of people in the world. Yes. And people born in deepest darkness East Africa may not know of Christ mm. so how could mm. they possibly worship him but yes if it's a God given gift and you recognize it and you use it and choose it and we can all do it if we choose to do it um, it's an awesome thing to do and I know when I was a seven year old kid in the playground I looked at my hands at seven years old and went oh wouldn't it be great to put your hands on someone and take their pain away at seven years old and now old. you're doing it now you're yes. doing it and now 40 um, odd years on I'm doing it and it's it's a wonderful way of life yeah and it draws in the good I have no issues going on in my life the whole within the spiritual zone when you're protected and grounded as Alfie alluded to the grounding is to connect you down into mother earth to stop you floating off etherically if that makes sense um and protecting yourself in a like the ready brick kid back in the day putting this aura of protection around yourself <laughs> it just keeps you safe from all the crap that goes on in the world and people do actually it does work for people if you visualize a golden aura white aura of protection around yourself and you ground yourself into the earth plane to keep yourself secure it works and i'm the one who does the one minute me moment on another show that goes out every Sunday, um, and I get very, very good reports back. And at the end of the day, Chris, I go by the feedback of what people say to me. And I could, you know, I could stop doing this and sit back in my, my house down here with my German shepherd. But you wouldn't be and, happy to do that. You, know, you wouldn't no, be happy. Because, no, because I have a calling. I have yeah. a calling to do this, and I will do this, and I will take the word out there globally from whether it's in this country out to, to Canada, which hopefully we're visiting in um, uh, later this year, to take the word of healing out there as well as trance mediumship and that's a whole other sort of area but it's all part of spirituality as such yes. um yeah so matt i'm with him and and uh, very much his words are my words one more one more here from uh, tom before before i let you go there oh, um sorry. he says the only thing i will add to the conversation about reiki is that if you have an actual disorder of some type you are best off going to an actual doctor 
There is a lot of so-called alternative medicines out there, but it's always good to remember that they are that if they actually worked, they would simply be called medicine and would probably be, be prescribed by actual doctors. For those who feel like they must try these treatments, they shouldn't stop going to their regular doctor. What do you say to, to that? Should, should, for example, if I had something, you know, and I was being seen at the doctor as a regular uh, thing for this, whatever, should I stop that and come to you? No. Absolutely not. And I'll tell you what, it's one common sense, but it's also ingrained into it, into you when you're training as a healer, that the one thing you never, ever do is to tell someone not to go to their doctor or to come off their medication. And part of the professional requirements is to ask each client whether they are on medication and if they are under the doctor and receiving treatment. And if they are, that they are to continue that uh, treatment and to attend the doctor's surgery until and unless they decide they decide that they choose to come off medication with the doctor's advice and, and professional's advice. That's not to say healers aren't professionals, but that's part of the absolute crucial that we are not the only answer to people's issues. The two can run alongside each other perfectly happily, and there are healers now in NHS hospitals, and that is a service that is offered. And I'm delighted to say about five years ago, I can't remember her name, but she actually made inroads, and there are now healers in some NHS hospitals. Absolutely not. Um, so that aspect of it is, is very, very important because, oh, a pre-existing condition what, was what he said. Yes. Yes. They, look, you can heal many things, if not everything. You can't cure anything, but you can heal and make better and alleviate and improve and, and assist. Okay, but I will never make an assertion and no good healer should ever make any assertion that they can cure someone of something. For example, you will never hear me say I can cure cancer. You will never hear me say I can cure, um, uh, cure uh, celiac disease, for example, or whatever. If there is a pre-existing condition, there is a pre-existing condition. However, you can alleviate the symptoms. It's part of disease that I spoke about before. The word disease is made up of dis-ease. It's a lack of ease. So you can ease conditions with people of with any condition that, that you care to throw at me uh, uh, and say. It doesn't mean I can cure it. I can make, or, or healers can improve it, make it better, make feel people feel better. Because uh, without going too deep and, and confusing the audience, I go in through the etheric field that's around all of us, the aura. I'm guided from above. It's not me doing it. It's channeling through me. But they're going into the very core of you as a person, and, it, and you are surrounded by your emotions, and you have emotions within. And there is a methodology that I use as a psychic surgeon where I do go in and I relieve the dis-ease and the emotional entrapment. So... Um, you know, this is a whole other show, and I'll gladly come back at any time in the future should I be invited and talk about it more with you. I think we um, would love to have um, you on again, Ted. It's been absolutely fascinating talking to you. Thank You're you. You're a really, really good speaker. Thank really, you. Really, really fantastic. And, thank, and thank you so you much, for Ted. The opportunity. And the main thing I want to say is Alfie Divine, watch out for him because he's a star. It was his first opportunity tonight, and for that, I thank you. It's not about me. You know, it's not about me. I'll, I'll facilitate people with workshops here at, at the place I run. Um, but Alfie, listen out for him. Watch out for him. Uh, please give him another opportunity to come on and expand on of what course. he's doing in the next few of months course. or whenever. Um, because the lad is a star and a phenomenon in his own right. And I'm very grateful to you, Chris, for giving me airtime. I get quite a lot of airtime in other ways. But um, it's been awesome and a delight to talk to you. And uh, great show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ted. Good luck to you, sir. Bye-bye now. All right, so God bless. There we are. What, a, what an absolutely fascinating call tonight from Ted. Totally unexpected for that to come in like that. And that's what I like. would like the show to be like, you know, totally unexpected. Um, I'm just having a... This, this was going to be just a one-off tonight. Um, but we will do again... We'll go again next Wednesday as well at 11 o'clock, OK? So next Wednesday night at 11 as well. We'll try another one of these, if that's all right with you, next Wednesday at 11. Haven't finished yet, though. I only intended to do an hour. But we'll go on a little bit further, as um, a lot of people are still there. Again, thank you very much, Ted. Um, Marge, I'll do some of your messages now, OK? Um, do bear in mind, while there's a call going on, it's 
impossible to read messages and calls at the same time, all right? So if you're waiting a little bit, that's that's why. Uh, March says grounding is connecting to Earth and releasing negative energies, connecting to the Earth. Oh, like lightning. It's like lightning, isn't it? That's another view of how uh, uh, grounded is, all right? Uh, Terry H says 18 million viewers. Yeah, you better believe it. You better... <laughs> 18 million viewers. What planet are you on? We've got a couple of emails coming up as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's uh, go back to some of Anne's messages that uh, I, I, I completely got these wrong. There we are. Um, let's have a look at this. There we are. Yesterday. Oh, that's yesterday, isn't it? There we are. Um... Oh, Anne isn't longing from shopping at Asda's. Oh, you go late night as well, Anne, do you? Ah, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, it's the best time to go shopping, this time of night. You just go out. There's no one in the way. I love it. She says, uh, they do the best American deli coleslaw. And I was at Argos. I needed a new telephone extension cable. I'm on my laptop and iPhone tonight. Uh, I can't imagine you leaving Waitrose to go to Audi or Lizzie. N neither can I, to be honest, Anne. Well, I've got to tell you, I've been trying something new in um, Waitrose this week. A brand new item was on the shelf. Um, if you're new to the show, you won't know, but I am a vegetarian. Have been for three years now. I don't believe in killing animals to eat them. That's my beliefs, all right? Um, and in Waitrose, they've got two new... Linda McCartney products in the not the frozen the the what they got the, in the fridges you know the great big fridges uh, that is a giant open ravioli okay all vegetarian so that's all lentils and that sort of thing and also this chicken thing although it's not chicken it's like I I don't know what Linda McCartney uses I don't know if it's corn or what but anyway it looks a bit like chicken tastes like chicken and it's got like tomato saucy type stuff and butter beans on the top and you put it in the oven for like 20 minutes or something like that two absolutely delicious items that are in Waitrose right now do go and try them they're not I think the the giant ravioli is about four pounds but it should serve two or in my case just the one <laughs> Okay, so do try that. It's really, really nice in Waitrose. Um, Anne goes on to say, I have a Waitrose card, yes. Believe it or not, people from Lewisham do shop in Waitrose. I find that very hard to believe, Anne, to be honest. Do you have a Waitrose in Lewisham? Surely not. I can't believe you have a Waitrose in Lewisham. She says, I introduced that card for free tea and coffee to a lot of my friends. Bromley and Edenbridge in Kent, my favourite branches. Well, you can't get it anymore. <coughs> and I'll tell you why. It's because of people like you, Anne, who go into Waitrose and have the free tea but don't buy anything. The queues, the queues that were building up in the little Waitrose uh, cafe stroke restaurant areas during the day were a joke. They were an absolute joke. So they have now removed the free tea. And if you want tea, you can have it for free, but now you've got to buy something. Yeah, you don't like that, do you? It's true. People were literally going into Waitrose with their card, going straight into the tea thing, having their free cup of tea, borrowing a paper, reading the paper, opening up laptops, plugging in things, to, and then leaving the shop, and not buying anything. Also, they changed that. About, I think it was about three weeks ago they changed it all, and now you've actually got to buy something if you want the free tea. So there you go. And the queues have disappeared. The queues have disappeared. It's your own faults. It's your own faults that you've got to buy someone. Should have bought something in the first place, and we wouldn't have got to that situation. Blooming cheat going in there, having your tea and not buying anything. It's like people walking into pubs, isn't it? Can I use your toilet? No, you can't. Bloody well buy something first. Tight-fisted people. Fair's fair. Fair's fair. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, Anne, I've lost your messages. I've lost your messages, Anne. Where have they gone? Oh, there they are. They disappeared and then they came back again. They, they disappeared. Um... Where are we now? Uh, Waitrose card. 
You, you've sent so much stuff in and I can't bloody well keep... Will you stop sending stuff in until I've read the bits out that you've already sent in? God's sake, where are we going? Where's the Waitrose stuff now? I can't think where I am now on your message. Look at it, how many messages have you... You must have nothing to do tonight, have you, Anne? Message, I, can I, I'll tell you something else about Anne, can I? She turned up at my quiz night the other night. I do this quiz night. Um, my jobs, I'm a karaoke host first. I do quiz nights, and I also do some DJing. Got to be honest, I'm not too keen about the DJing anymore. I get a little bit bored. I do get bored with the DJing now, okay? So I'm kind of moving away from that. I love doing karaoke, and I love doing quiz nights. I do this quiz night on a Tuesday night at a place called The Mayflower in London. Look it up on the internet. It's the oldest pub in London on the, on the River Thames. It's a beautiful place. Um, it's very small. <clears throat> if you ever want to come along on a Tuesday night, get there early, sort of about a quarter to eight, eight o'clock, and ring the pub first to book a table. Remember, it's the Mayflower in Rotherhive, South East London. And Anne turned up there last week with her, her friend Sean and Dean, and Dean's other half, that by the end of the night wasn't his other half again. But, <laughs> oh dear. I did chuckle when you told me that, I'm rather naughtily. I can't even remember his name now. Um, <clears throat> and uh, she she had this bloody selfie stick thing with her. So a sel what's a selfie stick? It's like a it's like a car aerial, and you attach your phone at one end of this thing, right? And you pull it up, and then you you point it like so so the camera is far away from you. And she had this blooming selfie stick, and she was and whacking people around the head as she's moving. But please don't turn up at my venues with selfie sticks. What do you look like? And there was her and her friend Sean, who's with us tonight, actually. Sean is with us tonight. And all they did the entire night was take photographs of themselves. I mean, how many, how many photographs can one take of oneself? What's all that about? I don't understand. Maybe a couple, you know, of you and a couple of friends in there. But why, oh why, did you take so many selfie, selfie photos? I don't get it. Pair of them. In fact, Sean was worse than Anne. Snap, snap, snap all night long. I'm hoping I'm going to be talking to Sean a little bit later on if he's with us uh, tonight, a little bit about Eurovision Song Contest. If you're not in the UK or in Europe, you might not know what that is. So we'll let you know what that's about maybe a little bit later on in the show tonight which was supposed to be an hour. I'm not going to do any more than two hours, I'll tell you that now. Two hours maximum, OK? We'll, um, we'll, we'll wrap up at one o'clock, if that's all right. Um, <sighs> See, you're still sending bloody messages. I can't keep up. Because every time you send another message, it moves up one. Well, as you've sent so many, I'm let me missing them now. So will you stop it now? Uh, uh, let's have... Did you say your second best supermarket is Asda's? Yes. Yes, I love Asda's. I love Asda's. I do love Asda's. Quite like that. Uh, uh, you've jumped forward again now. Uh, if you send me another message, I'm not reading any more out. Wait until I've read all these other ones. <sighs> Where are we going? Today. All humans are capable of healing each other. This is for man. Even Jesus said that. No matter what it's called, all humans can help and heal each other. Yeah, I think so. I go along with that, Anne. She says, you're not talking about that selfie stick again. Let's not, let's not, let's talk about the Quebec. I only took a, a few of you. Don't forget, I was almost represented the UK in Eurovision. Yes, yeah, she, she did a Eurovision song once, Anne. Yes, yeah, she did. Yes, she did. Now, how do I... I want to clear those messages, because I'm, I'm not keeping up with you, Anne. I'm, I'm really not keeping up with you, Anne. Uh, Matt says, Chris, I must say, this has got to be the, one of the best shows you've ever done. Do you think so? It's because of the... It's not me, it's the callers, dear. It's the callers. The callers make the show, not me. Um, this is just such an ideal time slot. I really hope you agree. Yes, I do, Matt. And um, as I say... Let's have a look. The next, the next two Wednesdays, I am free. So I think we'll, we'll carry on this, okay, for the next two Wednesdays. Is 11 o'clock all right? 
or do you want an hour earlier, 10 o'clock? I don't mind, whatever whatever suits you. Maybe you could uh, uh, send in a little email. That what, what time would you prefer this live show? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, 10 or 11 p.m. We'll certainly be here next week, okay? Um, I do have a Twitter and a Facebook as well. My username on both of those is Chris Reardon UK. Chris Reardon UK. So facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK or twitter.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK or uh, YouTube as well. The YouTube. So after the live show, the recording will go up on YouTube and you can find that at youtube.com forward slash guess what? Chris Reardon UK. All those and I'll put on there what time next week's show is. Okay. Um, Wendy says 21 million viewers earlier. Yes, there was 21 million. <laughs> I can only live and hope and hope that there were 21 million viewers. You never know. Uh, Janet in Arizona says, isn't Asda like Walmart? Yes, indeed, Janet. Uh, Asda uh, was actually bought by Walmart a few years ago. And it's, it's a really good one. It's a really good one. Uh, Brandon says... Uh, two hours, please. Brandon, you have your wish. We'll do two hours tonight. Tom says, I'll certainly try and listen to more of these shows if you do them uh, late like this. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to do uh, some late shows. Uh, we also do a, at the moment, we do an afternoon show, which is on Saturday at 12 o'clock midday. Okay, so Saturday, 12 o'clock midday. If you go to the main website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Click the union flag at the top of the page there. That will take you to the live show, 12 o'clock on Saturday. We generally come on air about half past 11, play a bit of music, and the show starts at uh, 12, OK? Uh, poor old Shania on the Isle of Wight says, I love Asda. We don't have one on the island. What's your main supermarket? Do you have several main supermarkets on the Isle of Wight? Shania lives on the Isle of Wight. Um, do you have several supermarkets on there? What, what, or do you have one big supermarket on there? Don't know. Marge says, my internet was upgraded and you're coming in truly live now. Our clocks are the same. Well, they can't be. If you're in America, they'd be hours different, wouldn't they? Matt reckons 11 p.m. is perfect. Do you know what day the clock springs forward one hour in the UK? No. But if you look it up on the internet, Matt, I reckon you'll find it there. Uh, Anne wants two hours. Well, we're here for two hours tonight. Worry not. We're here for two hours tonight. <clears throat> and Brenda says, the Asda near me is a dump. <laughs> Glad your one is better. It's funny they vary. Um, do you know what? There's actually a Sainsbury's that's a dump as well. I've been to. Now, it's near where Ronnie used to live. I can't remember where now. Somewhere in London, I went in this Sainsbury's. Oh, the people in there were just awful. The staff, the customers, I thought, I don't want to be in there. I didn't feel safe in there. And that was a Sainsbury's, dear. Oh, nasty orange bags. We don't like the orange bags. Um, let's just, tr I'm trying to keep up with you here, gang. Oh, yes, an email. Here comes an email from uh, Craig Adams, who's with us uh, up late tonight, who says, Hello, Chris. Craig here. Glad you're back with us. Yeah, I'm glad to be back as well, Craig, to be honest. Uh, uh, do you know what I could do with right now? Someone to go downstairs and make me another cup of tea. Because I'm getting a little bit dry. I'll have to bring up a flask next time. Either that or leave someone chatting for a while. I don't know. Craig says, uh, Nothing really going on in my world. Just that I've been getting more local business companies to sponsor my radio show each Friday afternoon. Uh, he does a show on a hospital radio station. Uh, I'm up to five sponsors for my radio show, each at £100 donation. So it's raised £500 for Castle Mead Radio, which, as I say, is a hospital radio station. Uh, a very important thing, hospital radio. A lot of, um, I was going to say proper DJs. But I'm not going to use that term. A lot of FM DJ. Oh, they're very important, some of them, dear. Oh, Christ. Have you ever met an FM DJ? Some of them, you know, they're just like you and me, you know, just normal people. And it's just like a just like a job. Others are, oh, they're very, oh, oh I'm an FM. Oh, you just do YouTube, do you? Oh, you just do hospital. And they look down their nose. 
Well, don't look down your nose. I certainly don't look down nose. Hospital radio DJs, very important. Those people ill in bed want a friend to listen to. They want a friend to listen to. And that's what you do, isn't it? That's what you do, Craig. And it's a, a very good thing to do. Anyway, it's raised £500 for Castle Mead Radio this year. And I'll hopefully bring that amount into the station each year now. Yes. We're hoping to have a party in November for our 25th birthday. I'll see who's doing the music. Shall I put your name forward? Oh, 25th. Hang on. Let me look at my calendar for you. My Barry Manilow calendar behind me on the wall. As sent to me by the lovely Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, where are we? November the 25th is a Wednesday. No, I'll be doing a show on November 25th, hopefully. Not sure exactly where we're going to stick this because I do have a couple of quiz nights coming up on a uh, on a Wednesday in April. So I've got to do those. Um, the, the other place where we could do a late night show is on Tuesdays at one o'clock. Uh, so is on Wednesday. So it's Thursday morning now. Yeah. So I could do a show on Tuesday mornings at 1am, sorry, Wednesday morning, so Tuesday night, Wednesday morning at 1am. This is the time we tried to do it last week and everything went wrong, everything went completely wrong. Um, but I could do one there. Is is one in the morning too late for people? I, I certainly think it will be too late for people here in the UK, but uh, those of you in America and Canada, it's probably the perfect time actually when I think about it. But... Um, uh, I won't be able to do every Wednesday, at least not yet. I want to see how this quiz goes in Islington that I'm going to do. But that's not until April. So for the next two weeks, we'll certainly be here at uh, 11 o'clock at night, OK? Um, Craig says, we're trying to get a new kitchen in our household and we're trying to sell some bits and pieces. And he s says, always oh, selling stuff on eBay. I can't really give your eBay stuff out. Oh, why not? Oh, yeah, go on. If you want to have a look at what he's got to sell, his eBay account is 3218Barry. OK, that's his eBay name, 3218Barry. Um, great, you're back. Have to meet up sometime. Maybe come and visit Castle Mead Radio. I would love to do that sometime. I really would love to do that. I would love to do that. All right, Sean? Uh, 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 Craig? Um, Sean? Right, you need a hat like they had in The Simpsons. Two bottles of drink to keep you going. Hope I'm not in the spam email today. No, you're not. I put you in the other one now. I, I um, clicked a thing that says not that. I don't know how it works on, on the Windows thing. I clicked a thing that said not spam and you don't go into the spam folder anymore. You'll be pleased to know. <laughs> oh dear uh marge says you need a keg with spigot and I, I do i'm desperate for a drink now we'll carry on until i can't talk anymore 29th of march uh wendy says is when we put our clocks forward in the uk and they will go forward by one hour that's on the 29th of march when we are officially in summertime it's a bit of quite nice weather at the moment it's nice and sunny i was just thinking you could do with a tea maker yeah i did say to ronnie if he i bet he's gone to sleep he's probably not with us now ronnie is he's probably he is say his piece and then there go he's not really interested in what anyone else has got to say he just likes to come on say his piece and then he goes that's it I very, very much doubt that Ronnie is still here. Terry H reckons 11 o'clock at night is perfect. All right. Anne says Croydon is a dump. <laughs> but I'm meeting Brandon for the first time tomorrow, Chris. Your show has brought us together. Your mug is horrible. I hate that sports company. What, Sports Direct? Yeah, but it's so cheap in there, dear. T-shirts and things are really cheap in Sports Direct. They absolutely are. Um, Shania says, on the, on the Isle of Wight, they have two Morrison stores, a Sainsbury's, Waitrose, Tesco's and an Audi. Oh, you've got a Waitrose. Oh, I mean, Shania, I'm impressed. They've got a Waitrose on the Isle of Wight. Well, you should have said Shania. Well, that, that's definitely on my... Because I like to visit different branches of Waitrose. I do. do they have a little cafeteria area in there, Shania? If they do, here's my promise to you. When I come to the Isle of Wight at some point, you and your dad, Vectis, is Vectis, isn't it? Vectis, 
must meet me and we if you've got if you've got a little cafe thing in Waitrose that's where we meet and lunch will be on me which can only consist of one cake you know I'm not going to buy you the dinner and the pudding and everything just a cake that will be lunch how fair is that is that fair <laughs> Marge says, will your time change? Yes, we'll be going ahead one hour. The thing is, Marge, so the time will change for you unless your clocks change at the same time. So you've got to keep an eye on that. You've got to keep an eye on that. People do, we all get confused when these blooming things go forwards and backwards. <clears throat> right. Um, let's have a look here. Oh, Craig also sends us this thing. He says, don't forget the new Thunderbirds Are Go series are coming, uh, I think, uh, around about the 20th of April on ITV and CITV, and the, he sends a picture of the newly designed Thunderbird 1. Now, I had a Thunderbirds toy when I was a child. It was an orange rocket, Craig. Do you remember what that one was called, the orange rocket? Because I'm not quite sure. Thunderbirds, I got 10, 9, 8. I love that. How's the music go? Thunderbirds are go. We love it. We love Thunderbirds. Uh, oh, Marge's clocks have changed already. Okay, so our clock will move an hour forward. So this show for you, Marge, will start an hour late later. Okay. It will start an hour later. Um, Lovely. So that's it. Now, here's a question. On my brand new, sparkling, highly working, fantastic computer, it comes with a keyboard. There's a key on here that says, do you know, I can't quite, is it V or W? One minute. It's got a bit of plastic over it, which I think means I shouldn't press it. It says LVT on it. And it's in the top right hand corner. And that's and it's like a like a little key. I'm just trying to pull that over there. I don't know if you're going to see that or not. I think oh, I think yes, you will. There, there, right there. There's a, the key on there that says LVT. Any idea what that does? Because it's got it's got a piece of plastic tape on it, which kind of says to me that I don't want to be pushing this. Because I have a feeling if I push that, the entire thing will go off. And then I'll throw my toys out of the pram again. Anyone got any idea what LVT means? Okay. Now, we won't be able to talk to Sean tonight, unfortunately, about the Eurovision, because it's a little bit late in his house, and he doesn't want to wake everyone up. So he might uh, might be available on Saturday. So thank you for that, Sean. Um, Shania says, I can actually remember... I can't remember if it has a cafe as well. I'm pretty sure it does. I remember a friend at school <clears throat> saying that he was going to Waitrose for his free cup of tea. But I haven't been in there for years, as it's on the other side of the island. Christ, it's not like it's a hundred mile away, is it, <laughs> ah, How far is the Isle of Wight? Of course, about five miles. Get walking, girl. Get walking, my love. That's it, get walking. Anne wants to know, can we do a Chris Redden tour on the Isle of Wight? Then all your fans go camping together. No, thank you. I'm not having you next to me. Not with all that noise you made, like in the quiz the other week. They were all singing YMCA. Weren't you? What a lot of noise you made on that table, your lot, and that quiz. Oh dear. So she's got the selfie sticks swinging around left, right, and centre. She's got the noise, they're all singing along. Oh dear. So, no, we can't do Eurovision tonight because um, uh, Sean's had to uh, uh, be quiet, unfortunately. Now, um. We've got a, a, an email, a couple of messages to do. Where are I? Brandon. Brandon, are you going to call me tonight? Brandon, is there any chance of a little chat from Brandon, young Brandon? Do you want to call in? I'll leave it to you. If it starts ringing, I'll answer you, OK? Promise. I promise. I promise. <laughs> now, uh, Brandon wrote in on the subject of uh, the short shows. I also do little shows uh, Tuesday, generally Tuesday, well, this this has become a long show, but short shows as well. You can find those, once again, by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. 
and you'll find the Saturday show and the short shows. I'll have to do another little box for the Wednesday shows as well now. Brandon writes, how I missed you in the Mirable Studios last week. I love your new clock. Well, it's, it's actually not new. You mean my, my cuckoo clock? Oh, it's got little chains and you wind it up by pulling the chains down. Look. So you pull that up. There's, there's, there's actually three chains on it. I'll tell you what all for. One minute. There we are. So one of the chains... It's a bit slow at the moment. Here we are. One of the chains... Oh, no, it's supposed to be slow, isn't it? That the reason it's a bit slow is because at the beginning of the show, if it was to ch if, if it was to cuckoo exactly at eleven, then you'd miss it because the opening films running and all that business. Yeah. Um, so the three chains, one of the chains, and you you just pull it. It's got a weight on the end. You see, there's a weight there. As you pull the chain, the weight goes up, and the weight pulls pulls the chain down, and that's how all the cogs move inside. It's very clever. And there's three weights, so three chains. One of the weights is for the time, right? That's moving the mechanism for the time. One of the weights um, makes the cuckoo come out. That works the mechanism for the cuckoo. And the third weight is the one that has, the, at the top, I don't think you can see it, is like a little balcony. And there are little people, little wooden people on the balcony. And they come out and they do this little dance and a tune plays, which you've seen twice tonight you might even see it again at one o'clock i might go a minute over just just so that you can see the little people going around and around okay worry not so that's what the uh, clock is um Brandon says funny you talk about dates on toiletries yes because we did a little show always a call now let's let's take this call hello who's on the line now hello chris oh keep talking it's Sean. Hello, Sean. Oh, you've managed to talk in. You know why? Why is that? Is everyone has everyone gone out? Everyone's asleep. I am outside in a dressing gown. Well, nothing underneath. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. It's cold out there tonight, dear. Freezing my bollocks off just so I could speak to Please don't Chris. swear on this family-based program. Shania is a good Catholic girl, and you've really upset her now. Apologise. <laughs> Sorry. Again. I'm, I'm cold. Go on, beg for mercy, get on your knees and pray to the Lord for forgiveness for that word you just used. Meow. Now you sound like a cat. <laughs> uh, how long do you think I... you're going to be remaining outside then like that? I don't know, until we've got Eurovision out of the way. <laughs> Eurovision Song Contest. Now there will be people in the world that don't know what it is. Please explain. Now, Eurovision is um, an amazing show. It's 60 years this year. And this year, we have 40 nations that will be participating um, in a contest to win. This year, it was won by Conchita for, in Austria. And our entry, and each entry will be played on different days in May, three dates in May, um, for a big final. And hopefully, we will win, or Australia will win. This yeah, year. I haven't heard the Australian one. Is that good? It's okay, but the way I'm thinking about it, us UK never win. No, so if Australia uh, win, then that would be as good. Yeah, we we are very attached to. I've always felt attached to. It's probably I'm a, probably a bit old fashioned. Any old Commonwealth countries, I do feel kind of attached to them. You understand what I mean? Yes. Mm. But tell us. How is Eurovision entered by Australia? Because they're not in Europe. I think it's right for them to be in this one because they have been watching, like um, I've been watching your shows, and you've been doing it for over 30 years. And I think we should um, invite people um, on like special grants to say, um, yes, you watch it. I think, I think you should be involved, which I think it's quite nice that they've been involved this year. Which is the case of the Eurovision. And the, it's quite popular there, isn't it? A lot of people watch it over there, don't they? Yeah. Because over here, I think we've treated it a bit too much like a joke. And possibly, that's one of the reasons we don't win it anymore. What do you think, yeah, I do agree with you. What do you think of our do... song this year? Is it a winner? I don't know, but um, after doing my radio show this morning, um, 
the song is so different to everyone else's, and it does stand out. So it yes. could possibly win. And we've had we have had a lot of songs win that have stood out. You remember the rock song um, from Finland? Oh God, don't even talk to me. Do about you remember that? Now, what was really it called? Hate, Oh, I can't even remember what the name well, of it. Well, you're supposed to be Mr. It. Bloody Eurovision. You don't even know what you're Can't talking just, about. You know why? Could why it's is the this? the most rubbish song I've ever said could, without could you, swearing. Could you sing the uh, British entry, please? Oh, why are you putting on the quiz? Uh, well, I'm sorry, dear. Better, better. You know, when you was at my quiz night uh, last week, you were in very high voice. I mean, the entire blooming pub could hear what you were singing. <laughs> so <laughs> why not sing now to my millions, drink. my 15 million viewers that are watching at the moment? We want to hear you sing. Sing, please. OK. Um, da, 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 da. I'm still in love with you. I'm still in love with you. That's part of our UK entrance. That's not bad, actually. That does sound like it. And w Describe the song. How does it sound? Um, well, our song is like gone back in time to the 1920s. Yeah, I go along with that. So it's quite a jazz, it's a jazzy song. Is there a type of music that it reminds you of? The oldies. Okay, the Charleston. Do you know the Charleston? You must know that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so I think it's very much like that, don't you? Yeah, and you know what? This year, when I was um, well, after listening to all 40 tracks, it's a hard year this year because there's 30 songs I like and there's 14 possibly win possible winning songs, um, especially the Swedish song, um, which is just incredibly um, brilliant. I, I did see you singing a little song. I did oh, see God, you that, doing... Um, that, uh, what's her name again? Conchita Hurst. Conchita Hurst. Rise like a phoenix out of the ashes, seeking love and adventure. I did say, but I have to say to you, you know, I was I, disappointed. I Do you know why I was disappointed? I couldn't sing. No, you didn't have a beard. <laughs> if you're going to sing that, you've got a beard. And quite honestly, I think you've been trying to grow a beard for a while, but it's just not happening, is it, lovey? You, you're not man enough to grow a beard yet, are you, my love? I'm not allowed. <laughs> What, is this a religious thing? For work. <laughs> we have to be clean shaven and look pretty, boys. What do you do? I can't remember now. Greg's. Oh, Greg's the baker. Yeah, where's my apple pie that you promised me? Or was oh, it the... Pe or was it the, tot the Tottenham cake? The Tottenham cake. Didn't you promise me a cake of some sort? No, I promised you a juicy sausage roll. No, I don't like... Uh, do I eat meat? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> don't eat meat. Why are you killing animals? Poor little things. I know, actually. I don't go, don't make practice. me laugh, you people. Calling yourself animal lovers and then eating a sausage roll. It's just a contradiction, isn't it? Well, you could have a corn sausage roll. A corn sausage roll. Uh -huh, I've had those. They're very nice, actually. Mm -hmm. Try I want you to convert you to now to vegetarianism. As from now. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yes. So, um... I don't know if you know the story. Last year, um, I heard all the Eurovision entries, and then this, um, I heard Conchita. And I, listened, I I didn't look at the pictures on the CD. I just got the CD from Amazon, shoved it in the machine straight away, and then played it. And I was convinced that the mother song was going to ring. You know, the boy from Austria? Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, not Austria. Mother, was he, or where was he from? Belgium. 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 Uh, big guy, I think, big lad, wasn't he? And he sang yeah. a song about his mother, and I thought that was a really good contender. And it didn't get through to the final. So I listened to the CD, and then I was going for it. Well, what, what one's going to win? And then I just heard Rise Like a Phoenix, and I thought, oh, my God. This is going to win. There was no doubt in my mind that that was going to win. OK, mm. so that's yeah. a CD. And I thought, what a fantastic voice she's got. So then I watched the semi the semifinals. She was on the first one, I think. 
Continue to work, work. I was like, all right, I'm going to see her now. And then I had no idea that it was a drag queen. It was a man. I had no I idea. I thought it was a woman I... singing. So I, I watched it. I watched the, the person singing it, the stage. And that is the winner. It's absolutely the winner. Anyway, I, I, I thought about it for a couple of days. Before. It has to win. It can't possibly lose. And I placed a bet on now, I've never, ever, Sean, been in a betting shop in my life. Never. Neither have I. I walked into this betting shop and I said, I'd like to place a bet, please. She said, OK. I said, um, I don't really know what to do. Can you help me? She said, right, OK. What do you want to bet on? I said, OK, Eurovision Song Contest. She said, right. I said, so do I give you the money? She said, well, have you got a name? I said, <laughs> I said oh, yes, uh, Austria. All oh, right, okay. So she looked. She said, "Can cheat her worst?" I said, "That's right." She said, "Yes." She said, "Yeah, you can put a bet on." She said, "Just a minute," and she made a phone call. And I think it was five to one, or four to one, something like that. I can't remember now. And uh, she says, "Okay, how much do you want to put on?" And I thought, "Oh, um, twenty, thirty. And I thought, "Sod it, a hundred pounds." Oh, right. She said, "I just got to make a phone call." So she then made a phone call. She said, "Yeah, we can take that." I said, so I handed over £100, and then on the night, uh, there really was no doubt in my mind. And now I understand what men, middle-aged men are shouting at the telly when there's a football match on. Because I was doing exactly the same for the Eurovision, and there was no one else in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Only me. And of course she won, and I went to the place and I collected, I think, £480. Wow. But then, the next day, my niece came round, so I just handed it all over to her. <laughs> well, it's like I said to Anne Cave earlier, um, this year there's nothing, no songs that are, um, that are better or on the same page as Conchita was last year. Right. It was a very unique song. Uh, Mark has just um, sent in a message. Hello, Mark. He's one of our karaoke singers. By the way, I'm doing karaoke this week at, um, on Friday night at Central Station in Islington, if anyone's around. Central Station, Islington, Friday night. And that's 9.30 to 1.30, okay, upstairs there. Um, Mark writes in, who's one of the uh, 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 wonderful, with very, very good voice karaoke, if you ever hear Mark singing. He's a big lad, comes in always smartly dressed, and he's got such a good voice. He says, Chris, the Finland Eurovision entry was Hard Rock Hallelujah. I remember it now, by Lord A. You remember that now, didn't you? Hard yeah. Rock Hallelujah. Oh, and they had these great, oh, fantastic song. Thank you, Mark. Much appreciated that. Um, uh... Uh, sorry, can I just uh, cut these messages um, of you can. before I lose out there? Uh, Marge says she's really enjoying the show tonight. I appreciate you talking to me. Have a great week. Yeah, thank you, Marge. We'll, we'll be here Saturday afternoon as well. Anyone who fancies an early, that's at 12 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Um, let's... Uh, Anne says, your show brought me and Brandon together, just like the London riots that kicked off in Croydon and Lewisham simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> I like it, Anne. And Brandon says, tell Sean to get some... I can't say that. I really I'll... can't say that, Brandon. Honestly, I'll just, um, I'll just highlight I'll just that and say... I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I'll just um, highlight that and send that to you, Sean. Where are you now? Oh, thank you. Oh, how do I send you a message on there as well? Uh... Oh, hang on. You're on, the fo you're on the phone, aren't you? Yeah. Is your Skype on the phone as well? Yeah. So you won't see my message, will you? Oh, I can't. Hang on a minute. Where are you then? I can't see you on there. Shh. Oh, there you are. One minute. Let's just... Well, I was thinking about signing me on Saturday. There you I go. I don't know if I can. If I you want to... What... I'm going to be watching X Factor tour. Oh, okay. Well, there, there's your message from Brandon. Uh, if you want to comment, please keep it clean. <laughs> Uh, Matt says on the subject of uh, Commonwealth, can you let the audience know that there's a petition in place to allow citizens of the UK, Australia, New Zealand and Canada to live and work freely among one, other, one another's countries with no more visas or any restrictions? Or oh, I'd be straight off to Australia. 
I'd be straight off to Australia. According to the national news here in Canada, this could be a massive movement of people within the next few years if all four governments get on board. I'd be interested to hear what listeners and viewers think about this idea. For those interested in Googling this, the, com the group started is called the Commonwealth Freedom of Movement Organization. So that's interesting. Would you do that? Yeah. Would you go over there to um, uh, Australia? I'd love to go to Australia because I've got family that live in Cairns. Cairns, I've been there. Oh, wonderful place. Um, I, I've been twice to Cairns, once with my cousin and his new, newly married wife. What a beautiful place that is. Oh, so I nice. Have, um, I also have um, a very a great pen pal that I'm, I've known since I went to Thailand in pen 2002. Pal. Yeah. Um, and he lives in Perth in Australia. In Australia as well. How lovely. Yeah. Well, Sean, it's been a pleasure talking to you. But it's nice talking to you as well. It really has, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Good night. Cheerio now, Sean. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. We're going to run out of time shortly. I, I've got to do these messages as well. Uh, Brandon uh, wrote in, we were reading his message when young Sean called in a second ago. Uh, funny how you talk about dates on toiletries, because I was saying on the short show, uh, was it was it yesterday or Monday? I can't remember which one it was. And um, there was there was a sell by date on on my uh, toilet paper wet wipes, and I was worried. What happens if you use these things after the sell by date? It's all very worrying. It really is. Brandon said, I, "I said, what would happen if you used them after this date?" And Brandon says, "It would be a walking fungus, I suppose." Forgot to mention I use baby wipes as I prefer them to wet tissues that break too easily. Yeah, but can you flush the baby wipes? That's, that's the worry. You might not be able to flush the baby wipes. Which is a, a bit of a worry. It really is. Uh, Wendy says, um, on the subject of the fan club that you mentioned the other day. Yeah, the Barry Manilow fan club that sent me a load of stuff, including this wonderful little free notebook because I'm a big big Barry Manilow fan you see he sent me this little notebook which was quite nice um, they don't use membership numbers anymore nice notebook well there's the notebook so how do they know it's you then if you're not using numbers anymore I don't get that that's very strange uh, finally on the show and Anne you've only got two minutes left because we're going after that I can't go longer than that time because otherwise I won't be able to record. I won't be able to upload the recorded um, uh, thing. Okay, Anne? So I've got to, I'm gonna have, I will cut you off. Bang after two minutes. Be warned, Anne. Because Anne wants to speak just before we go. We'll have a little uh, listen to what Anne's got to say, if she's still there. Anne, you, you've got to turn off my stream as well before I can take the caller, right, darling? I will just wait a second for her to turn off the stream because it's got to catch up. Uh, Janet says, if you use those past the sell-by date, they will dry out and you will be wiping with sandpaper. How awful. Anne, are you there? Anne? Yes, I am. Are oh, you there? Hello, Anne. Yes, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello? Hello, Chris. We oh, can... my God. I was going to call you. I can't believe. I feel amazingly privileged you've called me <coughs> the reason i've called you is because you've got one and a half minutes that's it <laughs> oh okay well i just wanted to feel that i made my mark tonight on your inaugural show to the nation on the planet earth 2015 march uh, and just had to say good luck it's fabulous we've loved your show tonight and may there be many more wednesday nights for the future of this country. So we'll be here you next week, 11 o'clock? this country, online radio. Next week at Fantastic. 11 o'clock then, you'll be here, will you? Fantastic. We're loving it. We're loving it. All right. We'll oh, see you next week. There. Maybe we get your... We are fans. We're loving you, Chris. Get you on for a bit longer next week. All right, Anne? Fantastic. Lots of love, Cheerio, my darling. There we are, Anne in, uh, in uh, Lewisham. Okay. Um... And finally today, very, very, very important, boys and girls. Very important, just before I tell you, okay? You'll find this show up online a little bit later on. Go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and you'll find all the bits and pieces there. Everything I do is on there, okay? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Finally, a very, very, very important piece of information from young Brandon, 
who writes, on the subject of the baby wipes, you can indeed flush them, just have to have a good flush. Not supposed to, but I've never had any complaints. <laughs> Boys and girls, I have really, really enjoyed doing this today, and we'll do it all again next Wednesday at 11 p.m., okay? 11 p.m. UK time. Uh, our next live show is on Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock. That's in the afternoon, 12 o'clock UK time, which I realise is very early for the um, uh, American uh, uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, if you can't join us, you can always pick up the recording once again by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and we'll have a, a little extra box for Wednesday shows, which I'll have to do when I finish this. All right, thank you very, very, very much for all your messages. Uh, the people that called in, the people that emailed, I hope I've got through all your messages. If I've missed any out, then I do apologise. It's a bit, little, bit difficult some, sometimes trying to keep up with everything. And uh, have a lovely Thursday. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye now.